part of my lab is moving towards looking at the implications of some of the mechanisms of development on behavior. Okay, so we understand how a brain develops, but if it develops in a certain way A, or a slightly different way A prime, or a, you know, quite different way B, then what are the implications, what are the consequences of these different developmental routes that the brain can take? What are the consequences to behavior, right? So we know that animals behave differently from each other. We also know that they develop differently. But we don't know that these are directly causally linked. And so part of what my lab wants to do here at ICM has to do with trying to establish that causal link between how the brain develops and how we end up behaving. And I'm especially interested in the question of individuality, personality. Often you say, you know, somebody reacts in a certain way and you say, ah, oh, yeah, but of course, but that's Jean, he's like this. You know, so you know that there's, you, you can almost predict that if you say something that that person will react in, a, in one way and that the different person will react in, why do you know that, right? So that tells you that there is such a thing as an innate personality trait. Now we see this in mice, we even see it in flies. So individual flies really will behave in a very stereotyped way. The same individual will react very similarly to the same stimulus under different conditions. And another individual will react differently. So when you look at individuals, you see this kind of personality, this kind of individuality in every species. And so there has to be some fundamental principle that underlies this idea of, you know, individuality. Why is it always there? That means it's in evolution, it's been an important thing. And one of the ways that we can think about that is that we develop slightly differently under slightly different conditions, but that once our brain is developed, you know, we are kind of stuck with it, right? It's like you, you get a set of cards in a game and, and that's it. Those are the cards you have to play, right? There's a lot you can do with those cards, but there's a lot you cannot do also, right? And so we try to understand where are those limits, you know, to what extent does the way the brain developed, you know, influence, dictate, cause certain personality traits in certain, in certain individuals, right? And to the extent that that might have implications then for psychological issues, you know, um, certain uh, personality types, some people call them disorders, I don't like the, the term very much. Is that something that you're born with, right? And if so, how exactly in the brain does that happen? And so we try to use the, the fly to understand this um, because I think, you know, it's the same principle that cuts across all animal species. If you discover the fundamental principle, you can then worry about the specific mechanisms later on. But the, but the big question is always the, the basic principle behind these things. And the other side of my lab, as I said, does disease-related genetic research in the brain. And the ICM is, of course, very focused on trying to understand the genetic uh, causes of disease and, and how that translates then into cellular mechanisms. So we have the basic development, we have the behavior implications of basic developmental mechanisms, and we have the, the disease-related aspects that we will pursue all in, in parallel. For a discovery to be called great, you, it should be almost intrinsically unpredictable. And so if I were to, to tell you I know what I want to discover, then whatever it is I want to discover is not so interesting. So, uh, you know, I want to be surprised. I want to find things that I did not expect and um, didn't think about. But if there is one thing that I'm really passionate about understanding in the short term, let's say, is the, the issue we discussed about personality, right? The extent to which randomness in the development of the brain, because we know and we have shown actually in my lab and many others have, have, are coming to the same conclusions as well, uh, that there is an element of randomness in how the brain develops, how everything develops in fact, including neural circuits in the brain that control behavior. And so the extent to which random chance, just like in evolution, random chance is super important uh, to generate variation. I think that random chance in brain development generates variation in behavior. And I would love to be able to demonstrate that that is the case, uh, at least in flies. 
And, you know, if we can achieve this in the next three to five years, I think that would be just a very satisfying uh, thing to, uh, to discover.